we're a little hampered by the fact that while the Fourier trial has been presented, published, and produced a host of post hoc analyses and additional publications, the Odyssey trial has been presented, but we have not yet seen a peer reviewed document and a published article, uh, never mind a variety of published post hoc analyses. So I think the data is less sparse with Ali Rakimab than Eva Rakimab. So I think it would be very difficult to parse out indications or recommendations when you don't really have the full story from both drugs. I think the drugs work in a very similar mechanism. Cost is always a concern. I don't know what we're going to see in the next set of guidelines, but uh, potentially at least including cost in the way we think about and understand um, additional or incremental medication allotment it might be a key part of that and so uh, where cost lays out in the difference between these two drugs may play a role in choice down the road but certainly as of today that has not weighed as well made its way into our current guidelines and thinking When you look at, at indications for medications, I, I think it's often based on the way trials were designed. And, and so at least currently, we have two trials that were designed in patients with atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease. Unfortunately, there was a trial going on with a third PCSK9 inhibitor that was looking at high-risk primary prevention patients and was not followed through to completion because of a loss of efficacy over the course of the first year that the patients were studied. The drug wasn't unsafe, it just seemed to lose its benefit due to the generation of antibodies. So uh, the only population that's really been studied in a randomized prospective fashion is the highest risk ASCVD population. Um, we would all love to see an expansion of the indication to what we assume to be equally you know, important to treat high risk primary prevention patients. The diabetic patient with hypertension or smoking or the patient with subclinical atherosclerosis, patients with elevated life protein A, etc. And so I hope as time goes forward, trials like that are designed and that will allow it better, uh, about better inform us as to whom we can additionally use these drugs with an expected benefit.